Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I was actually going to go a lot deeper tonight in this message here on the former and latter rain, but I've been getting more and more behind in some of the studies that I've been doing, and I tend to drift to other directions. And I don't have enough of that information put together as of yet. So I'm going to share with you some things that I did discover on this. And uh, then I'm going to come back hopefully in the morning and I'm going to go a little bit deeper with some other uh, teachings as well, specifically where God reigns in his temple. But uh, I got to share this with you, though. I just think it's amazing here. We are in the book of, uh, oh gosh, where, where are we at here? Joel, Joel chapter 2, I believe it is. Uh, verse 22, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth its fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he giveth you the former rain in just measure. And he causeth to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain at the first. And the floors shall be full of corn, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and shall praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath, that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed." Do you realize how much of this is actually a prophecy of the gospel of Jesus Christ? A lot more than I could even begin to tell you. Let's look at this in Hebrew, though, because it doesn't actually say former and latter rain. And that's the reason why I want to go deeper uh, in this with you than just the surface here. But we're going to do that tomorrow. Uh, today, though, I'm going to share with you though, some of the fulfillments, though, in verses 24, 25, 26 here, that a lot of times people do overlook that identify that this is about Jesus' own ministry. All right, so we start off with, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he giveth you the former rain and just measure. All right. Ki natan lechen et because he gives to you the rain, la tzidik, uh, la litzika, actually, which is the feminine for, uh, version of the, of the uh, righteous rain. For a, for the, he gives you the rain for righteousness, is what he's telling you. Goes on to say, and he calls it to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. The Yored Lechem, which means, and it will come down to you, Geshem More, which is the teaching rain. More is teaching, Geshem rain. Uh, the, he, so he causes to come down for you the teaching rain. U Meshelachosh Berashan. The latter rain and the, uh, the rain from at the first. Now, it's not repeating the word rain anymore in the sentences they show in English, but rather it continues, it's just the fact that we know that this is what it's speaking about when it's talking about the latter and at the first rains. But what kind of rain is it? It is a teaching rain. And re in reality, when we read about the restoration of the years of what these worms have eaten, it's because the word of God had been devoured by the enemy and therefore God has to make a restoration so that latter and former rain is actually a teaching rain which is the very ministry of Jesus Christ but also notice and the floor shall be full of corn and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil did you know that that's what happened in Jesus's ministry Jesus said to them, how many loaves have you? They said, seven and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes, gave thanks, and break them and gave to the disciples, the disciples to the multitude. And they did eat and were filled. And they took up the broken meat that was left, seven basketfuls, and they did eat 
were 4,000 men besides women and children. Wow. What did Joel say about this over here? Joel said, The floor shall be full of corn, that's the bread, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. Well, the vat that overflows with the wine was obvious too. And I always wondered about this. I never quite understood why this verse was in there. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto them, unto him, they have no wine. Talking about Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have I to do with you? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear to the governor of the feast, and they bear it. At, bear it. And when the ruler of the feast tasted the water was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. And the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Look ye there, right there. Joel says that the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. <laughs> he wasn't even talking about a vat for, for, in other words, the water barrels there are overflowing with wine. Oil, we could take the oil and go to the time of, of, of course, it wasn't during the, not this is not specifically during the time of Jesus, but remember the cruise of oil would not fail during the days of Elisha, or Elijah, and he, had, and he came and the, the widow that, that took care of him, he had already said there wasn't, rain wasn't coming upon the earth and everything, but because of what she did, she put Elijah first. He said, fear not, do as you have said, but make, but make me a little cake first and bring it forth in me. And afterward, make for you and your son. And for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the jar of meal shall not be spent, and neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the land. Now granted, like I said, that wasn't in the days of Jesus' ministry, but I guarantee you one thing. If Jesus was feeding the multitude... If Jesus was taken uh, uh, and, and able to, to give the bread and the fish, if Jesus was able to take and turn the water into wine and all those, all those uh, pitchers were overflowing with wine, well, he could certainly do like they did with Elijah and cause the oil to keep going on as well. No difference. And quite frankly, the oil was going on with him because when he poured out the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was a representation. The Spirit is represented by oil. As David said, my cup runneth over. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He poured out such an abundance of spirit that even the cup was overflowing. We continue on. Verse 26, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and shall praise the name of the Lord your God. And there, there again, that's still that eating of plenty as we already know was when Jesus fed the multitude. Uh, it's, just, it's just amazing to me to see uh, also, too, the oil was used by the woman uh, that was considered to be the worst sinner in the city at the time. She comes there with the alabaster box and pours the oil over the top of his hair, head and was wiping, him, wiping her, uh, his, his feet and stuff, kissing him with, with, her, with her hair. But she took the oil of her own ointment and poured it over onto him. And that could have, too, been where the uh, vat shall overflow with wine and oil. Of course, I know it's talking about the harvest is what it's talking about, uh, speaking of specifically there. But anyway, I just want to share a few of these little things here with you as I prepare tomorrow. I'll continue on to dig deeper there. There were some things that I really, because I'm, I'm really wanting people to understand what he means by that teaching rain. And then also, uh, I'm wanting to get into where God, uh, thy God reigneth. Uh, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger of good tidings that announces peace and the harbinger of good tidings that announces salvation that saith and design thy God reigneth. So much I want to share with you. So hopefully I'll be able to get to that in the morning with you. God bless you. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News.